paper out again. I don't even know what to say. Maybe some water was going to put my name on it. He did it again tonight. He can spell my name right. Of course, his son's got the same name. But he's got to get it right. If you have your Bible tonight, open to Romans chapter 12. <coughs> Brother David, what do you call this? A Paul Carter special? What does Brother David You're not here? Huh? Oh. You told him I thought he was here. I'll talk to him. <laughs> so bad, I'll buy him. Romans chapter 12. I'm just going to read a few of these verses at the end of the verse, or end of the chapter. Spend our time there. Uh, this evening. Romans 12, 17. Paul said, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as it lieth in you, live peaceably <laughs> with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, you shall, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. I want to ask you a question tonight as we look at those verses. Because I know the persecution that comes against people that try to live for the Lord and try to do right. And it seems like there is a definite opposition against the people of the Lord. So the question tonight is, what in the world should we do? And as we look at these verses tonight, we'll try to answer that question. Let's pray together. Father, bless this word tonight. Let us hear from you uh, as we study and as we preach. Let it speak to us. Lord, I know we get sometimes between a rock and a hard place in this life. And it's hard to know how to survive and how to respond to this world and how to live our lives under the constant, it seems, accusation of the enemy and I pray tonight through your word, we'll receive a little blessing, a little encouragement, something that'll help us go be better for you. Lord, let people see Jesus in us. Whatever that takes, help us to live up to the mark that people can see you in us and know who you are. Bless this word tonight. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 What in the world are we going to do? <laughs> Three little things that we get out of these verses that I want you to think about tonight. This is a word that you hear a lot of times, like you know, watch football, and we see quarterbacks come under uh, uh, intense pressure because of the just the, the, the defense might be all over them, or, or they might be behind them, they're just throwing an interception. When you hear this word, they need to be poised. And we need to be poised. The word poised means to have a composed, self-assured manner. So I say to you, first of all, tonight, as we look at verse 17. Tell you what, I believe I can outrun him on my little boy. You know what? Be poised. And so we need to be poised. Verse 17, he says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. What we should desire not to do is not to respond with evil to evil. When somebody does wrong, man, it's everything in us, right? And we were taught that eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. And we're taught, you know, somebody hurt you, hurt them back, and somebody hurt you. Know, a lot of kids talk to the boys. Don't throw the first punch, but throw the last one. You know, if you get in a fight. And so we got this whole roundabout thing that we, we've got programmed into our mind. And, and we get into these situations where it, it's, it's kill or be killed, or, or, or you're either going to be bullied or you're going to be the bully. And what Paul's saying here for the church, for the Lord's people, is that we cannot respond to evil with evil. We can't come against that with that. We don't fight like they fight. We don't operate like they operate. So when the persecution comes into our lives, our desire should never be to respond with evil. But notice that it doesn't say we shouldn't respond at all. It doesn't say necessarily that we should be passive, but that we should be poised. There's a way to be bold, to be courageous, to be strong, and to be imposing without being... I'm going to try to say Without responding and playing the same game they're playing without being evil and fighting evil with evil. And so when he makes that statement, be sure you don't pay back evil with evil, but listen to what he said. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. So be honest and be forthright. We should be uh, uh, in all situations with all people. Do our best to be honest. Do our best to be pure-minded, pure-hearted. One of the things that I've learned, I, I've never been necessarily a fighter. I'm not, I'm not a drop-of-the-hat type guy. I take to a certain point 
But then it seems like from that point I go from A to Z real quick. And I've never been real good at finding that middle ground where it's not just easy, easy, and then throw stuff, right? You know what I mean? And so finding that place where you're able to respond, but also to do so with, with just a, a degree of confidence, but not arrogance and not being brash with people, but to be honest and to be able to deal with people from a poised position in the sense that there are things that are going to come against you that are appear as evil, that are going to be presented as evil. And the best way that I have found when I get to that place where I feel like I'm going to respond in a way that I'm going to regret, that I have to, I have to pull myself away from the situation. You'd rather be late to respond than to be wrong in your response. You don't want to hurt the situation. And I know a lot of times in family dealings, when, when it's brothers and sisters, or brothers and brothers, sisters, sisters, whatever, or parents or step-parents or whatever the case may be, if you're not careful, you'll quickly respond to something because of your anger, and you'll say things you'll never take back. You'll say things that even though they might forgive you, they'll never be able to forget and so the best thing that you can do in those situations is remove yourself from them, pray, take your bread, sleep on it if you have to, then come back poised from a position of confidence but a place of being composed and, and have this self-assured manner that we're talking about by definition. So be poised in this world and the situations and the demons that we have. Second thing I want you to see tonight in verse 18. What are we supposed to do in this world? We need to be poised in how we do what we do for the Lord and we need to be peaceful. As Paul writes on in verse 18, listen to what he said. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Now there are a couple of things that Paul says here that you want to be sure to not miss. But Paul did say, if it's possible. Because you all know as well as I do, there's some people you can't live peaceably with. There's some people you can't get along with. And you know what's interesting? Is in Scripture, Paul writes to the churches, and Paul didn't make this statement when he's writing to Corinth. Paul didn't say, I want you to put a mark on those that commit adultery. And he didn't say, I want you to put a mark on those who have committed fornication. I want you to put a mark on those who have lied and cheated and stolen. No, Paul said, I want you to put a mark on those that sow discord. That's the one that can do more damage than anybody in the church. That one that sows discord and discontent among people, that separates the people, that's the one that can hurt. See, a marriage can be hurt by an adultery and the situation. The kids, the immediate family, the community can be hurt. But eternity can be impacted by one sowing discord among the church. I'm talking long term. People we never would have met will not get the gospel because of the weakening of the ministry of the church through the element of discord. And so when Paul says live peaceably with all men, he talks about if it's possible because you know there are some people you can't live peaceably with. And I don't mean to be ugly with you tonight. But if people can't live peaceably, then they need to go somewhere else. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you can't get along with people, what, I don't, I've never understood why somebody would attend the church that didn't like the preacher, that didn't like the deacons, that didn't like the music, that didn't like the Sunday school program. It was never too hot, or never hot enough, never cold enough, never comfortable. They didn't like the food. They didn't like how long the service lasted. They didn't like how far it was to church. They didn't like the lights. Didn't like the piano. But they go to church there. Go somewhere else. It's all right. Amen. I promise you, if I had that list of dislikes, I'd been gone a long time ago. Amen. Ain't nobody gonna say that. You can't worship the Lord like that. You can't worship the Lord and be that upset. And, and, and all you're gonna do is, and when you're not at peace, you're gonna make other people. Out, out of peace. And she's going to take that away from you. Be happy, man. Love life. Enjoy the church. Recognize that God's still good even when I don't get my way. Even when things don't go the way I want to. I can still live peaceably with all men. And sometimes you have to just hush, right? Amen. Any married people in the house tonight? Amen. Sometimes to live peaceably, you got to just you gotta let something go every now and then. You're not going to get your way on everything, right? you got to let things go. It's got to be a compromise. Some people go both ways. You got You got. Sometimes you got to just hush and let her have her way. Men, sometimes we need to get our way. Can I get a witness from the men in here tonight? You need to let her. I'm going to put around the king of my castle. Right? You want them Alice? Remember what he said? He's going to send Alice to the moon, Jack. <laughs> if it's possible, live peaceably. If there's somebody in your life that you're not, I'm not talking about divorcing somebody. If you're married to somebody, you've got to figure out how to live peaceably with, the, with one another. But if there's somebody in your life, an acquaintance, a friend, or somebody that you spend time with that brings an element of, of unpeace or no peace into your life and you can't live and cooperate peacefully with them, you don't have to stay with those people. Amen. 
And if you need to confront them about it, confront them about it and talk to them about it. About why this element of no peace is in you and what can we do to help that because you're hurting me and I'm hurting you and we'll never be everything we could be until we find peace together in our relationship and in this moving forward. If it's possible, he said, because some won't allow it. But as for you and me, and as the children of God, and as the people of God, especially in the house of God and the family of God, we've got to live peaceable. We've got to have peace among us and between us. Listen to what he says. As much as life in you. What Paul is saying is, I don't have any control of you being peaceful. I can't control whether you want to be a person of peace or not, but I can control me. And I can't expect you to be peaceable if I'm going to get upset every time you do something I don't like. I'm going to have to be peaceable, and you're going to have to be peaceable, or it's not going to work. But what Paul's saying is, as much as lies in you, be peaceable. Because I can't control the other person. Some people love to be up in the air, and all they want to do is blame somebody else for why they act like that all the time. It's nobody else's fault. Amen? You can't be a jerk and blame somebody else for it. Get right. Get your mind right. Get your heart right. Do what's right. As much as lies in you, Paul said, live peaceable with all men. Find a place in your heart. In your demeanor, in your constitution, in your walk with God, to have peace with people. Or you're never going to be happy. You're never going to be satisfied. And listen to this, you're going to make everybody around you miserable. So find a way to live peaceably with all men. That's what Paul said. So we need to be poised. We need to be peaceful. And last of all, this is one that I'm not going to go over well. We need to be positive. Amen? Dearly beloved, verse 19, avenge not yourselves but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. And in doing so, you'll heat coals of fire on his head. We've got to know what we're doing. God knows what we often get wrong in our dealings with people. When we go into something with a flawed motive, the outcome's probably going to fall. But if my motivation is right, in what I go into. So Paul says here, take away this mentality that we've got to get everything straight. Paul says in verse 19, don't avenge yourself. You don't have to defend yourself when you're doing God's work. You don't have to be on the defensive all the time. He said, you'll give place to wrath. But listen to what he said. He said, listen to what the Lord said. Vengeance is mine and I will repay. Say it the Lord. You know when somebody's not doing right and somebody's opposing you, you've got to stay up. You've got to keep moving forward. Because if the devil gets them to trip you up, even if you just turn around to argue with them about how right you are, then the devil wins. Because we're not moving forward. And the first step to backsliding is to quit moving forward. So you've got to, you've got to be able, I've, I've used the illustration, I've used the illustration, and I'm going to use it again and again and again. About the pit bull walking down the road, and the chihuahua runs off the porch, Run circles around him, biting and nipping and yapping, yap, 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 chewing on his ears. Pitbull could have swallowed him whole. He never broke stride. Preacher sitting on the porch saw what was going on. He said, I stopped and prayed, Lord, whatever that bulldog's got, give me some of it. <laughs> that we'll be able to take whatever the world throws at us, whatever the enemy throws at us, whatever opposition throws at us, and the devil throws at us, and we'll be able to never break stride. Paul says, when you do that, you heap heaping coals of fire on their head. You ignore somebody. And stay positive. You ignore somebody and stay progressive. Keep doing what God's told you to do. And the Lord's going to work it out. The Lord said, vengeance is mine. I will pay. If they're in opposition of what God's doing, God don't need you to fix that. If they're in opposition to what the Lord's trying to do in your life, or in this church, or in the world, I'm telling you, God don't need you to be the sheriff. He'll take care of them. And uh, the best thing we can do is love them. And warn them and pray for them because it probably ain't going to be long. They're going to need us to help them pick up the pieces because God's going to bring the hammer. And so you hope that that never happens to people and you pray for people. But don't get involved in that. Live peaceably. Keep your head up. Don't look at that man. Don't let them pull at you when they try to. Because that's all the devil wants to do is get a response from them. That's all he wants to do. I remember my brother's 13 years older than me. So he had the advantage on me all my life. And when I was my children's age, he's 13 years older than me. We'd be sitting at the dinner table. Nobody looked at me. Stick his tongue out at me. Well, he could straighten his face up. Nobody would see it. And I'd go crazy. He stuck his tongue out at me. I'm going like straight and hollering, mad, ready to fight. You know how it is with like a little kid. And he'd never get caught. And I'd be the one getting in trouble for trying to get him in trouble for what he did. You're better off just to not pay attention. The devil sticks his tongue out at you. Just wave and go home. 
Just keep walking. Keep doing what God's called you to do. That's what Paul's saying. Don't strive to get revenge. Don't strive to try to make things right. Trust the Lord for some of that stuff. He's going to take care of you. He's going to take care of you. He's 100% aware of exactly why everybody does what they do. If it were an accident, if it were an assault, or if it was demonically induced, God knows it. He's in total control. He knows where we're coming from. It's best to let God do the responding for the evil that's in this world because he knows from where they've come from. You heard this expression, and that's where these verses have kind of birthed this expression, is kill them with kindness. Keep loving them. That's what Paul says in verse 20. This blows the mind. This is when Jesus said, somebody slacks you on one cheek, give them another cheek. If somebody takes you to court and sues you for your coat, give them your cloak also. If somebody compels you to go with them a mile, go with them two miles. Here's what Paul says in addition to that. If your enemy hungry, feed him. That doesn't make sense. Because if he's hungry, give him just a minute, you can start him out, right? You won't have an enemy anymore. I knew a guy that owned a logging company. And he had an old guy named Leroy that worked for him. And he drove a log truck for him for 20 years. Leroy stole gas from him the whole time he worked for him. And somebody asked him one time, he said, don't you know Leroy's been stealing gas from you for years? Why don't you fire him and get somebody else? He said, because I know what Leroy's doing. He said, if I fired him and got somebody else, I'd have to try to figure out what they were going to be doing. <laughs> At least I know what he's doing. And I'm all right with it because I know what's going on. So when we understand that sometimes there are going to be some evil things that go on. There are going to be some wrongdoers. A lot of times, cutting the cord is not the answer. A lot of times, recompense and evil for evil is not the answer. Jumping up and going run Leroy off is not the answer all the time. Sometimes you just got to keep loving Leroy, and eventually Leroy's going to find out you knew I've been stealing gas all along, and you love me enough not to fire me. And what the Lord can do with a testimony like that, He says, if your enemy, not your, not your friend, He's not talking about even somebody you don't know or an acquaintance. This is your enemy. This is your chance to get rid of your enemy. If he's hungry, Paul said, feed him. You know what I would say? In my human nature, starve him. Cut him off. Be done with him. Knock him in the head. Then I've got no more enemy. The problem is, is another enemy is going to come up. And then you have to figure out who that is. The best thing is, is know who you are. I knew a pastor that pastored in Baton Rouge had a church that ran about 1,200 people. A pastor retired from a church in Jacksonville, Florida that ran 3,000. They called him, said, we'd love for you to come be our pastor. He said, I'm not interested. He said, why? He said, because I've been in Baton Rouge for 10 years. I know where all the crooks are. He said, if I come to Jacksonville, I've got to start all over trying to figure out who the devil's are, right? There's a lot of people in the church of 3,000 people. You've got a lot of devils you've got to figure out. You've got to figure out who's who. Figure out who's going to do you right and who's going to do you wrong. He said, I've I, 10 years. I haven't figured that out where I'm at. I don't want to start over trying to learn all that. You know who your enemies are. Bless them. Bless them that curse you. That's what Jesus said. Paul said, if they're hungry and feed them, it'll blow their mind. If he thirsts, what is that? Give him something to drink. And in doing so, you'll heat these coals of fire on his head. When you do this, you're going to kill them with kindness. You'll kill that fire to do evil, to do wrong, to hurt, to manipulate. Just keep loving them. The greatest day that will ever come in the relationship between you and somebody that's going against you is when they find out that you knew what they had done all along and you could have hurt them and you could have stopped them and you could have stood up against them and caused all kinds of trouble. But even though you knew it, you loved them enough not to. Paul said just keep being positive. God is never going to cease to bless you for doing right. Never. Even when it don't make sense. Even when it's uncomfortable. Even when everybody thinks, you got to get it. We live in a gotcha society. Everything's gotcha. Turn on the news when you go home. No, don't. You'll be depressed. You can knock a Sunday out in 30 minutes watching the news. Don't do that. But you turn on the news, this one got this one. That one got that one. This one, this one, this one. Democrats got the Republicans. Republicans got the Democrats. Here comes the dollar. He comes to Monroe. Come on. So it's round and round and round you go. Everybody's fighting. Everybody's feuding. Nobody likes each other. Nobody's happy. And it's all about who can get who, who can get who the best, who can get who last, who can get who the, the biggest, who can get the biggest scoop on the other one. What Paul's saying is don't, don't start what, what's old Randy Travis on. Don't go digging up bones. <laughs> Just love him. God's going to take care of you. He's going to help you through it. You don't have to get the last laugh. You don't have to win. You don't have to always be the one to get the upper hand of the last word. God's going to take care of his business if you do what you're told to do. If he's hungry and feed if he's thirsty, give him something to drink. Look what he says in verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. That word overcome doesn't necessarily be defeated by evil, but it means to be over, overcome in the sense that it's pulled you to its side. When you're overcome of evil, it means that evil has 
Now it caused you to submit to evil. Now you've played the game. You've engaged. And because of that, now you're as guilty as the other person. You're as involved in it as the other person is, and it's going to be an issue for you. And once you get in, it's hard to get out. So don't overcome evil with evil. Don't try to get into the evil, because if that evil overcomes you, you're going to be in trouble. Here's what he says to do. You overcome evil with good. Don't let evil cast a shadow over you. You rise above that, let your shadow be cast over evil. You don't have to overcome this with evil. Don't let the evil get you. Overcome the evil, not with evil. Not with gotcha. Not with the last punch. Not with the last shot. But with good. Keep doing good. Keep loving people. The church is about doing good. We cannot be on the defensive about anything, let alone everything. We are called to be an offensive, not offensive, offensive people. When Jesus said, on this rock, I build my church, and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. Gates are a defensive strategy. You don't put gates up if you're on the offense and get in your way. You wouldn't put a gate up if you were trying to move. You put a gate up when you don't want something to advance on you. But if we're the ones that are advancing the agenda that God has called us here to advance, we don't build the gates. The devil does. He's trying to stop us. We're not trying to stop him. We're not building walls around the church. We're building holes and doors to get them in. We're not trying to get, we're not trying to hard, hoard up what we've got and, and try to build walls and barriers around the blessings of the Lord and sit in here like an insecure nerd in a fort in the corner of the playground. That's not who we've been called to be. Did I say nerd? I shouldn't have said that probably. <laughs> Did y'all record that? <laughs> Look much love to all the nerds out there, right? But don't 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 hoard yourself up and think that we in the church tonight are supposed to sit here and be insecure and only offensive and you can't come in my fort. That's ridiculous. We're supposed to be on the offense. Let them come in and know that there's enough of the presence of God and the power of God in here that if they come in to do evil, God's good enough to change their heart. He's good enough to save their soul. And we might get to see something miraculous take place and God melt the heart of a hard-hearted, hard-headed sinner and get them on the right team. Don't overcome or let evil overcome you. Because when that overcomes us, we become defensive. We don't have any business being defensive. We're to be on the offense tonight. So we overcome evil with our offense. By doing what? What we were told to do. Feed them. Give them something to drink. Love them. Help them. Minister to them. Lift them up. They don't deserve it. Neither did you. But God loved you too. And he helped you too. And he ministered to you too. Just keep your eyes on Jesus. Because the second you take them off of Jesus, it gets ugly. You hear me? It gets bad. We went to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Went to the Wonderworks Museum. Had all these crazy things. Hurricane simulator, earthquake simulator. You get in there and pay money and it would blow your hat off to feel what 99 hour means about. Put you in an earthquake simulator, shake your dentures out. Crazy. We went through this whole museum looking at all this crazy stuff. We get to the end of it. And the only way out is through this thing. You open the door and close it, there's a catwalk. Cylinder-shaped thing with one like a platform that you could walk through. It was flat, it was level, it was straight. But the thing around you was spinning. And there was dots and like laser lights glowing. And that thing was spinning. And the second that you went in and that door shut behind you and the lights went off and all you could see was what was going on, you felt like, I've never been drunk in my life, but that had to be close to what it feels like. You couldn't walk straight. You couldn't see straight. It was the most disillusioned thing you ever felt in your life. Over the back door, which is about as far from here to that back wall back there, there was one of these red exit signs. I figured out about three steps in, if I look at that exit sign and stare at that exit sign, I walked through there unfazed. Didn't bother me one bit. Not one thing of trouble. No matter what was going on around me, if I fixed my eyes on the right spot and didn't take my eyes off, I went through without any issue. That's the way this life is. There is a lot of crazy stuff going on. It always has been. It always will be. You take your eyes off of Jesus, it's going to overcome you. But you keep your eyes on Jesus, you won't do anything. You can get where you're supposed to get. You can go where you're supposed to go. You're going to hurt. You're going to cry. You're going to, you're going to pray. You're going to suffer. But you're going to get there if you keep doing what God told you to do. If you just keep on pressing on for the glory of God, you can overcome evil with good. And there will be opportunity if you keep loving people. Don't jump on every chance you've got to give them. Let the Lord play this thing out. 1 John 5, 4 is the verse we love. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. 
This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. I love this verse in Luke chapter 10, verse 20. Jesus makes this statement, but rejoice, rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. Even if, even if evil wins the battle, knowing that we've got victory in the war, even if victory, or, or if evil wins tomorrow, lands a punch, and they do something, and they get away with something, and I won't prove just remember, at the end of the day, if you're a child of God tonight, your name has been written in heaven by the blood of the Lord Jesus. It's not erasable. You are a child of God. Live like it. Have that joy in your heart, that, that desire to do that. Remember to have faith in doing what God's called you to do. And when the persecution comes, Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. That means to encourage one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. So in closing, our desire is to be poised. Our defense is to be peaceful. And our department is to be positive. This is what God's called us to do. What are we going to do in this world? That's what we're going to do. We're going to keep doing what God told us to do. We're going to keep loving people. We're going to stay up. And we're going to trust the Lord for the outcome. Amen. Amen. Father, we love you tonight. And God, we thank you so much for your word. I thank you for the privilege that we've had today to come into this place and worship. What a blessing it's been to be able to open your word, to be able to preach, to be able to sing, to be able to worship. I pray tonight, Lord, as we open our altar and give this invitation, I pray if there's one here tonight that's struggling with their place in this world. Maybe there's somebody that might got something going on in their life. Maybe there's somebody that stood strong against them. Somebody at school, somebody at work, somebody in their, in their family that's caused them trouble. And everything in their nature says to get them back. I pray tonight you'd help them see the only victory that we're going to have in any of these situations is in Jesus. And the only way to have that victory in Jesus is in what he said. So I pray tonight, Lord, you'd help our heart to trust you that it might take a little longer. It might be a little bit harder than we think. It might be a tough case for you to crack in someone's life. But we know that you're able tonight. And you don't need us to get in the mud and play their game. We don't have to play the devil's way. We don't need to be overcome with evil. We need to overcome that evil with good. So I pray tonight you'd help us to stay up. Lord, to be poised in our, in our effort to do what you've called us to do. To be positive, Lord, in these things that we've talked about tonight. And Lord, trust you for the peace of God that passes all understanding. That you give us the ability and the resolve to stand even in the storm that people might see Jesus in us. If there's somebody that needs help with that tonight, let them come to this altar and ask you for some help. Maybe there's somebody tonight that needs to be saved. I pray they'd come tonight too. Let us take a Bible and show them how to be saved. Don't let us leave here tonight having not done what you put on our heart to do. But if we do what you say, I know you'll be pleased. So we pray you have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Y'all stand with me. <coughs>